When did you make the decision to go back to school for TV and broadcasting? And how did you get into performing uh, stand up for the first time? How did that all break down? Uh, well, actually, I, I went to school for broadcasting after I started comedy. I was working at the bank and uh, at the call center, and everyone was just like, I was just clowning people around me. Like, you should try stand up. You should try stand up. And it wasn't the first time I ever heard that. And that's where I started it. I went out one night and just checked it out. Uh, and then I went to school afterwards because my parents were like, what are you doing with your life? You're not going to be a comedian. What the hell kind of goal is that? So I just got them a piece of paper while I was pursuing comedy. Smart. Mm, nice. Smart. Made them happy. Where was your very first show? What was the first mic you hit? Uh, yuck Yucks. Who's an eye amateur? Oh, yeah? Nice. Where you at? So did you go to the Humber program or you went somewhere else? No, I, I didn't go to any program. I was just, I would just go there every, it was the first Yuck Yucks was the only thing I knew about comedy before I started comedy. It's the only thing I right. ever heard of. Right. So naturally, I went there first. On, I just found out when the amateur night was, and I just started going there every Tuesday. And I went there about four straight Tuesdays, and I said hello to the booker every time. And by the fifth time, he's like, just tell me when you want to go on, and I'll put you on, I'll put you on next week. And I was like, sick, I'll do it. Nice. Do you, remember, good, do you remember the first set? I don't remember the set, but I do remember it went really well. Uh, I went fast as fuck. I told probably like a hundred jokes, just like bang, 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 bang. Uh, and it went really well though. I'm just chasing that dragon ever since, bro. Are you the type that invites people to your first show, or were you like, I'm doing yeah, this on dude, my own? You stay the fuck I, home. And I brought like 25 people to my first show. The whole nice. front row at UX was all my people, but it was a pack night anyway. Regardless. Right, right, yeah. Those Tuesday nights, some of those were were pretty fire. I started. In London, Ontario, doing a Yuck Yucks amateur night there uh, for my first time. And then shortly after that, came to Toronto and did a couple of those Tuesday nights where that's where like, I felt like I was in the big time doing five-minute spots yeah. on an amateur night. But in a packed house in, in Toronto, like it was like, holy yeah. shit, this is, the this is the real deal like, here. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Nice. So, Nitish, when was the first time you got paid to do a set? First person to ever pay me was Hunter Collins on a show, Third Class Thursdays, in uh, Vapor Central. Vapor, yeah. Yeah, he put twenty bucks in my hand. I was two years into comedy, and I was like, "No way, <laughs> no way!" I was so excited. You were like, call "In your, in your, in your face, yeah. mom and dad, twenty bucks." Yeah. <laughs> I was calling all my friends. I was like, "Oh no way! I got twenty bucks for seven minutes of comedy." Right. Doesn't even make sense. Did you spend it that night? That was McDonald's right away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Proper celebration. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you did a show at Vapor Central, I remember the first time I, I did a show there and you got 20, I'm sure you got $20 and you also got high as fuck, whether you were smoking or uh, not. Because you'd go, cool. I remember my first time in there and I walked in. I'd never been to a vape lounge before. Uh, so I, it was like Narnia to me. I walked in and I was like, what is this glorious place? All these eclectic, odd, oddball types and all these crazy contraptions like blow torches and uh, elaborate bongs and vaporizers wow. and things that I'd, I'd never, every time I went in there and I, I was usually going to Mike Rita's shows and I had no, like, I would, I, I realized my, my level of like weed paraphernalia and weed knowledge was like down here. And it was like, I'm look, I'm watching like scientists and rocket scientists figure out how to smoke weed with these contraptions that I've never seen before. It was amazing. Is that, is that place closed down? Does it exist anymore? Sorry. Is I'm that the place sure. at Bloor? Yeah. 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 Just south of Bloor, Bloor, Bloor and like Young. Bloor and Wellesley? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they had like I, uh, the weird condom thing, right? Where you blow you blow up the balloon and then you smoke that out of that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, I always found that one weird. <laughs> <laughs> they were all weird, man. The dabs and everything. Yeah. Dabs, yeah. Dab. Oh, I remember yeah. The, the first I remember time I ever tried. I tried to dab at uh, vape on the lake one time. That was the first time. I don't. Maybe it was you that gave it to me. It might have been. <laughs> uh, and I'm that was like. It's like crack of weed. You know, it's so right. It's a little too oh. concentrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So 20 bucks. Me too. That was my first uh, I, first time I ever got paid. It was a $20 bill. And same thing. I was like, this can't be real. Like, this, yeah. is, this is too easy. I say dick jokes and you give me money? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Seven minutes of comedy is 20 bucks. Imagine how much I can make in one hour. That's what I went through my head. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. When you break it down per minute, it's pretty good. The challenge is how many minutes are you on stage every week where, where exactly. you're like... <laughs> the dollar value on every minute, right? Right. Yeah. Right. What's the What's the most you performed during like during a week? Uh before the pandemic, I was doing like 15, 20 sets a week. Nice. Yeah, I was out there. Yeah, you're a grinder. You've always been since you first started. You were You were all over the city doing shows all over it. the place. Yeah. The track to me, man. Yeah. I need that. Yeah. Would it be like one venue, three different sets, or would it be like you went to sometimes, three different spots? Sometimes it was one venue, three sets. Uh, sometimes I was running around the city. It all depends. But I was at the corner comedy club a lot. Right. And I would get like three sets a night usually. Who was it? Uh, was it Dom Pere that a few years ago, maybe five, six years ago, went out to like break a record for – shows in in a week and did like 80 shows or something like yeah. that he was he was doing like 10 or 12 just line them up there's all a lot of people don't realize there's all the comedy clubs but then there's at pre-covid there was any given night there's probably a couple dozen stand-up shows ranging from open mics to booked um professional shows but if you play your cards right and bounce around and and you're able to to time it right and and you have good relationships with the bookers, that's what you do. You'd bounce, you'd go do five or seven minutes here, then you go to the next one, then you go to the next one. Maybe you come back for a late show at one of the early ones. It's great. It's weird. Yeah, you're, it but it's it's stand ups. Stand up, stand up, and stand up comedians are a little bit weird because there's that masochistic uh, part of us, and then there's it's it is a weird addiction. It's kind of an addiction almost like you just get hooked on it and then you just yeah. kind of can't stop <laughs> I, i'm under the subscription that uh applause is the best drug there is like, that's true that's it is what it the is most energized you will ever feel when you get it it's pretty nice yeah yeah <laughs> i mean applause and laughter yeah yeah, yeah.